All right, Saints, I am back. Check it out, check it out. I'm very excited about, well, I'm excited about all the ones, all the videos that I do, but this one is uh, really on my heart right now. And um, I just wanna thank you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for coming on this broadcast. And um, as you guys know, every city I go to, every state I go to, revival has just been on my heart. And uh, that's what I'm about to talk about. I'm about to talk about revival, okay? But before I do that, Father God, just I just thank you for the sheep that you have brought. Thank you. May this word go out. May it provide healing. May it just may it just provide just everything that they need right now, Lord. And I pray that I speak what you want me to speak. Amen. And I just thank you, Lord, that no weapon formed against me or this ministry shall prosper. Not against me, not against my family, not against you. Amen. And I cover this broadcast with the blood of Jesus Christ. All right. Amen and amen. All right. Also, I, I'm, I'm going to pray this prayer. And uh, maybe I'll start doing it at the beginning of every broadcast. Because this is such a deep prayer right here. It's in Ephesians, okay? I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord, Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Glory to God. I pray that over you right now. Glory to God. Amen. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Man, Woo. I'll tell you what. I feel like the Lord hit acceleration button on me. Amen. Yeah, I know this is called the walk, but right now it's like a sprint. It's like a sprint right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Like I said, I want to talk to you guys about revival. Revival when? Revival now. That's what I'll talk to you guys about. And sometimes we could go, we could go through life and we're like, Lord, where art thou? Where are you at? Where are you at, Lord? Where are you at? Right about now, most, if not all of us, are ready for some change, right? You know what I'm talking about. What's going on right now in the news, in America, right? And by the way, I don't watch that much news. I, very, actually, I don't even have a TV. So, but some news does, you know, smartphones so you do get some news okay but uh, how many of us are ready for a revival type change i think a lot of you are also i would presume most of you reading this or listening to this have prayed just like me god we need you we need revival now amen because we do. We really do need revival now. We really do. We need it now. So what is this word revival? Well, it means a lot of things, but it means an improvement. Okay. Or doctors uses this, right? They may say, wow, the patient has what? Revived. The patient has revived, meaning to come back from what seemed like certain death, okay? As you guys know, we just went through this um, pandemic, whatever you want to call it, right? It seemed like certain death. It seemed like um, we all know the church didn't step up how, you know, like it was supposed to. Some people did, though. Some people did. There was some some pastors that, that did. And like I said, I... Psh, I tip my hat to them. Amen. That's why we we got to be we got to be ready. 
you always got to be ready, right? You got to have that mindset. You always got to be ready, okay? Revival, right? Back from what seemed like certain death. Doesn't that sound like the church? The church needs a revival because, look, the book of Acts represent a church that was a lot stronger than we are today. A lot stronger. Read the book of Acts. Shouldn't we be stronger today than in the past? Right? Shouldn't it be better today than, than what was in the past? I mean, we got iPhones now, right? We got technology now. Shouldn't we be better? At our think about it. At our very fingertips, right? At our very fingertips. Might be using my phone right now, otherwise I would hold it up. But at our very fingertips, we have more information than kings did in the past. Think about it. At our fingertips, we got more information available to us than kings did in the past. That's power. Think about it. At our fingertips, at a moment's notice, Okay, next I want to talk about is pointing fingers. A loser, a loser always points his fingers. A loser will always point his fingers. But a winner raises his arms. A winner raises his arms. So which one do you want to be? You want to be a person that does this? Or you want to be the person that does this? Okay, I want to be the person that does this. This will be the key to our next revival. This will be the key. So we got to stop complaining, stop blaming, or rather stop complaining and blaming. And let's start worshiping, right? Let's start worshiping. When we pray, when we worship, we usher in the very presence of God every single time. Every single time. When you were young, you ever had, um, when you were young, you know, you're a kid, you ever had a busy father and uh, you run up to him, you're like, daddy, daddy, look at this. Look what I can do. Come watch, watch. Right. And your dad might respond. Not now, Jimmy. Not now, Billy. Not now, whoever, insert your name here. Not now, daddy is busy, okay? Now, I've done it at times too. I've done it at times, but I make it a point that when I get done or, yeah, there's times I, I, I stop what I'm doing. I stop what I'm doing and I go see what, what my daughter wants to show, okay? Because I, I, I remember, you know, you, you just know how, how that feels, you know? And I get it, you know, we all have deadlines, there's stuff you got to do. And sometimes kids just have a way of, oh, daddy has a deadline, uh, let's go bother him. You know, it seems that, that way. But uh, you got to take time out. You got to take a time out. Amen? Take a time out. And so anyway, we all know how that made us feel. Well, daddy God, even with a full schedule... Think about it. There's what, 7 billion people on this earth. Babies are being born every day. You know, you would think daddy God is busy, right? You think that there'll be enough on his plate. But daddy God, even with the full schedule, if that's even possible for him to have a full schedule, he never does that to you. He doesn't do it to me. At a moment's notice, we have access to the King of Kings 24-7. I think this is so understated. Right? This is so understated. We have complete access. There's no business hours for him. He's always open. 
Think about it. He's always open. Wow. We have complete access anytime. In fact, it says in Psalms 104, Psalms 100 verse 4, it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Okay, so the key here is one, thanksgiving for now. Thank you, Lord. You're blessing me now. Thank you that I have food to eat. Thank you I have a roof over my head. And if you don't have a roof over your head, you can say thank you for the very breath that I have. Thank you. Okay. Number two is praise. Worship. He is worthy of our worship. God, you are worthy. I worship you. You are the one true God that I worship. Amen. And be thankful for what he has done in your life. Okay. Don't forget the things that he have done. Thank you, God, for saving me from this situation. Thank you, Lord, for bringing me from Utah to Virginia Beach. Thank you. All right? Thank him. Remember the things that he has done in your life. For bless him. Acknowledge and bless his name, for he is worthy. I bless you, God. I bless you, Abba Father. I bless you in every way. Bless him. Now that you have an audience with the king, what will you do? Consider that. Think about it. Don't just do it. Just see, we can do it and we can pray and just like, oh, okay, just pray. Let me go wash the car. Okay, we can get in. Hold on. Just stop. Pray, be in the moment and really consider. You know what helps me? When you pray, think of Jesus is right there in front of you. That makes it even more powerful. Amen. Try it. Try it. I guarantee you. Try it. While I was doing this, the Lord Jesus came to me. And let me tell you, every fiber, every cell of my body knew actually even more than my body I'll go ahead and I'll say all three knew him my body, my soul and my spirit like if you've been in the military you know what I'm talking about everything just stood at attention every cell my whole body the soul my spirit stood at attention it's like the presence of Jesus, just his presence demands attention. I don't know how else to explain it. And when Jesus showed up, I knew, and every cell of my body knew, this was the one who made me, who crafted me, me. Can you imagine that? Meeting the person that crafted you, that made you. Can you imagine that? And in his presence, when he came, I had this urge not to be empty handed. Do not be empty handed before the Lord. Amen. Always bring something. Don't be empty handed. Always bring something. Okay. Okay. And so this was my, my prayer time. And so he came and instinctively, I was like, I got to give him something. I, I got to give him something. And I remember I looked to the left. I didn't see nothing of value that I, I could give him. I looked to my right. I didn't see nothing of value. I was like, oh, no. And he's coming closer and closer and closer. And I'm like, oh, no. I, I It just... I don't know where it came from. I just had this instinct. I need to give him something of value. 
and he's coming closer and closer and now he's like right here and I reached down inside my chest I pulled out my heart and I gave it to him I just gave it to him and when I gave it to him he was pleased and he smiled glory to God glory to God He was pleased. Now, the thing is, Jesus, he's no respecter of persons, meaning, what will you do when he shows up? What will you give him? Whether he shows up in your bedroom, in your living room, in the bathroom, wherever. He did it for me. He's going to do it for you. Amen. I truly believe that. In this day, God, our father, still to this day. He wants to co-labor with us. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. We're waiting on God, but God is waiting on us. Lots of laughs, right? I put that in there. Lots of laughs, right? We're like, God, God. He's like, hello. I want to work with you. That's why if, if you hear me say, let's step out, step out, step out. It's so true. He wants to co-labor with us. Okay. We have come so far in time, but yet the process is still the same. Let's go to Genesis 2.19. Genesis 2.19. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Look at that. This is such a loving verse, right? Picture it. God can do anything he wants to do, right? And yet he made the beast of the field. And notice it says, God brought them to Adam. He brought them to Adam. Adam didn't go to the animals. God brought them to Adam. Hmm. You would think Adam would go to God. Adam would go to the, you know. No, God, it's almost like, it's almost like this is, yeah, like like he's being a servant. He's bringing him to Adam. He doesn't have to do that, but he did. He brought the animals to Adam. Meaning Adam didn't have to move. It says, God wanted to see what Adam would call them. God was so excited and happy with anticipation on what Adam would call each animal. He's like, I, I can imagine him. He's like, check this out. Check this out. I'm going to bring them to animals. Oh, check this out. You know, and I, I can just see the, the Trinity just look, 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 look. This is the moment. This is the moment. And then Adam is just named the animals. And they're just like, wow, look at the, you know, this is what co-labor looks like. Co-labor. God could have did it all. But what fun is it in that? Amen? And here's the thing. This highlights how God still wants to co-labor with us, even to this day. God truly wants a relationship, a partnership, if you will, a family. God could have done everything. He could have made the animals and named them. But no, God held back and wanted to see what Adam would name them. And it pleased him. How sweet when you think about it. You get to see this interaction between God and Adam, Adam and God. So sweet. 
If you want to meditate on something, meditate on that. Amen. So we have some ingredients now, don't we? We have one, don't complain, but praise and worship him. Two, co-labor with him. Now for the last ingredients, this is a big one. For revival, here's the last ingredient. This, mm. okay, take some notes, take some notes. Let's go to Matthew 10, 13. Matthew 10, 13. I know you guys probably read this before. Like I said, there's layers to the Bible and we're peeling it back. Come on, we're peeling it back. Glory to God. Don't you just love revelation? We just thirst and we need, just need revelation. We need these mysteries to be unveiled. Amen? Matthew 10, 13. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. Okay? So you may say, uh, okay, anyways, what? Exactly. You have to digest this, saints. Digest this. We have been given a supernatural ability, but how many of us are using it? And I'm pointing to myself as well. Okay? How many of us are using it? We have the ability, according to Matthew 10, 13. I'm walking this out just like you are walking this out. Amen? We're walking this out together. Amen? But according to Matthew 10, 13, we have the power to release peace unto the atmosphere and the ability to call it back. Now, here we go. Stop looking for an atmosphere and become one. I'm guilty of that too. You know, I've, I've gone to places before and I'm like, nah, nah, not feeling it, right? You ever been to those churches where you're like, yeah, nope, no. And then some places you go, you're like, whoa, the glory is here. The presence is here. Yes. You know. But this is the time that we're in now. Stop looking for an atmosphere and become one. I received that right now. This goes along with the other adage you ever heard. Of, oh, I want to see change. I want to see change. Well, why don't you become the change that you want to see? It's so true. It is so true. Become the change that you want to see. You see, you make a difference. You really do have the supernatural ability to change the atmosphere around you. Okay. Now, in my case, for example, uh, my father, um, whenever he came home from work, I, I, I could laugh about it now because, you know, I, I'm healed. But, oh, my goodness, when I was going through it as a child, whoo, 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 let me tell you, whenever my dad came home from work, he, he had this, this big truck, right, big green truck. I think it was a Dodge. But anyway, when he would come home, I would hear the growl from his tr from the truck engine. You know, it's coming down the street. I, I could hear it. And I could hear the tires as they hum down the street. And then as it comes to a stop at my house, whoa, I knew daddy was home. And instantly this fear would just come over me. I didn't know what kind of mood he was in. I didn't know if he was going to yell at me or just ignore me. But you could just feel the atmosphere shift. You could feel it change. Even when he walked into a room, my dad's ego, it could barely fit into the room. That's the only way I could explain it. His presence just had this effect. So this effect, as you can see, be it for good or bad is real. It's real. 
And you guys may have felt it, you know, in your lives as well. It's real. Okay. Now, there was a documentary years ago about a satanic witch. Uh, she was trying to flee from the occult. Uh, and on her way, on her way to seek deliverance, the people in the building that were waiting for her could sense she was coming from blocks away. They felt the atmosphere shift. Then they saw her come into the building. Now, I'm not trying to lift up the dark side by no means, but what I'm trying to show you is we all have this, whether it's in a good way or a bad way, okay? So how much more power as God's children do we have, you know? When you arrive at church or at your workplace, your very presence has the power to shift the atmosphere. And yet we're not really using it. At least not, not a lot of us are. Now to change the atmosphere, we can, at our very presence, we can shift the atmosphere to, we can speak into the atmosphere and change it. So those are the two ways to change the atmosphere is your very presence Two, you can speak into the atmosphere and change it. That's the power that we have. Okay? And again, like I said, it's for good or good or bad. Okay? I mean, another bad example would be, what if a coworker walked in at work and he just started shouting profanity? Does that change the atmosphere? Heck yeah, it does. But that's in a bad way. Glory to God. How much more power? Come on. God has all the power. Amen. His power trumps the enemy's power. So as you start a new job, for example, what do most people think? Oh, I hope they like me. I hope it's peaceful there. Unlike my last job. Right? No, 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 no. You have the power to shift that atmosphere just to release Peace from your spirit out of faith. Okay, you have it in you. You have it in you. The kingdom of heaven truly resides inside of you, inside of me. Release it. Release it. Like right now, I just release peace. I release peace to you right now. Peace and shalom. I just release peace, the peace of God that goes beyond all understanding. May you receive peace right now. Right now. There it is. There's that peace right now. There's that peace. Glory to God. There's that peace. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Amen. Now, you can release favor, you can release peace, you can release joy, okay? Whatever is inside of you from God, you can release it. We release whatever we carry inside. Now, this is for the good and bad. So I'm showing these examples so, you know, you make you understand. So, for instance, there's some people out there, they fill themselves with what? With pornography. This is why you see hidden pornography in Disney movies and films, right? This is why you see that. Because these artists, unbeknownst, well, I, unbeknownst to them, maybe some of them realize it, I don't know. But more than likely, unbeknownst to them, they're filling themselves up with pornography. But whatever you fill yourself up with, it comes out. It's going to come out. It's going to manifest. Okay. It's going to manifest itself. So that's why you see these pornographic uh, uh, cartoons and whatnot, because it's coming out of the artist. Because that's what they feel. That's what they've been feeling themselves with, you know, in the privacy of their own home. Okay. 
Now, so now you see why people do what they do. This is what they fill themselves up with. Now, I don't believe this is what the originator uh, Walt Disney had in mind when he first created Disney. I don't think this is what he originally had in mind. Amen. But as you know, Disney is huge. And I'm just guessing here, maybe it got out of control for him. You know, I mean, how many people was working for him? Right. Thousands. I mean, I'm not trying to give him any excuse, but I really don't think this is how it, he set it out to be. Amen. But I believe right now God is doing a cleansing. He is exposing, you know, the enemy wherever he's at right now. He's exposing it. And I just thank God that uh, they actually wanted to turn Disneyland upside down. I say upside down, meaning they wanted to go further into the darkness. And I just thank God that was stopped. That, that, that's all I'm going to say. It was stopped. Amen. That was stopped. All they wanted to turn, they, they wanted to turn it into an abomination. That's what they wanted to do. Okay. But glory to God, it was exposed and it was stopped in Jesus name. Thank you. Yeah. You haven't seen what they really wanted to do with that. Hmm. So anyways, in conclusion, revival, what I'm trying to say is revival is in us now. It's in us for us to release. So don't look to your pastor. Don't look to your leader. Don't look to whoever. It's in you. It's in you. Okay. And we're going to release it by faith. We're going to release it by faith. Let's co-labor with God. It's about time. Let's co-labor with God. Let's release the revival that's in each and every one of us. Amen. Let's do it. Let's pray. Father God, according to the word of God in Matthew 10, 13, by faith. I release the joy, the peace, the revival, and the anointing of God right now in Jesus' name. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Release, release right now. Revival, joy, favor right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, may your healings break out. May joy manifest right now. And above all, we need your presence. We need your presence. We pray, we pray for a habitation of the kingdom of God that never leaves but stays. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. So what do we do? That means when you walk into church, you be the revival. When you walk into a prayer meeting, you be the revival. Release it. Make a conscious effort to release it. Pray it out. Release it out in Jesus' name. Okay? All of us is part of the body of Christ. So we got to stop looking for this person and that big name, that big name. You got the same thing. You got the same thing inside of you. Did you know that? You got the same thing. You just got to release it. Amen. Release it. Glory to God. Saints, I hope this blessed you in every way. Okay. I got my website up now. Uh, when you guys get a chance, stop by. It's thewalk-ministries.com. Check it out. I got, um, uh, I'm uploading more videos 
more blogs. Uh, I got a donate page. If you guys feel led to donate, donate. And um, I got text to give. I got Zelle. I got Cash App. So if you guys feel led to give, go ahead and give. And also, if you guys want to book appointments, you know, I am now opening up to one-on-ones. So if you guys want to book appointments, go ahead. That's on my website as well. You guys can book appointments. If you guys want to uh, go further, for those of you that, that are really hungry and just want more, here it is. Glory to God. I bless you, saints. And I love you guys. I really do. Take care. Be blessed. Stay blessed. Amen.